Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at NASA's John C. Stennis Space Center uh, in Mississippi. We are at the E-1 uh, test complex on test stands number one and two. We've got some awesome Aerojet rockets, and we're here with Tom Martin, who is uh, Business Development and Strategy at Aerojet uh, Rocketdyne. Tom, good to see you again. Good seeing you. Last time we met in Washington, it was uh, right after you guys did an AR-1 uh, test. You've got an AR-1 or parts of an AR-1 on the stand now for another test. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys are trying to achieve. Uh, sure, Vago. Like I said, this is all related to the AR-1 uh, booster engine uh, program. Um, we just went through our critical design review on the engine system. Um, we're here at the uh, E-Complex, E-1 test stand, like you said. We actually occupy two cells here. Uh, to do uh, hot fire testing. Um, one cell is doing what we call stage combustion testing where we're actually coupling the pre-burner with the main injector um, to validate some of the design parameters, specifically combustion performance, um, heat flux into the main chamber and things like that. And then test cell one uh, to the right is where we're doing our battleship full-scale pre-burner testing. So we're getting performance data on the pre-burner, investigating stability, some injector configurations and things like that. And for, uh, since we always like to, you know, there are some people who are rocketry experts and guys who really understand it and some people less understanding. Talk to us a little bit about what the pre-burner is and what are some of the subordinate tests and how they fit into the overall uh, propulsion architecture, the engine architecture. Right. So, so way back at the beginning of the program, we laid out the, te the test program, we identified critical risk items that we see for the development of the engine. Um, things like pre-burner and main injector stability and performance are always risks we want to burn down as quickly as we can. Uh, so the pre-burner is what drives the turbines, which drive the pumps, which pump the propellants into the engine. Um, so it's kind of like a small injector, small rocket engine. Um, we call it warm gas because it's only, you know, you know, several hundred degrees. Um, it, when you're when you're talking about a system that gets to the surface of the, the as hot as the surface of the sun, right? Yeah, that's that's almost cool, actually. Right. In a rocket engine, warm is a relative term. <laughs> um, so the, the the battleship preburner, like I said, it's it's the, the, one of the amazing things about the E complex here um, is that it can deliver the extremely high pressures that the pumps on the engine would normally generate, and it allows us to test the combustion devices components without the need for the pumps and other complexity. So we're able to run tests more efficiently um, and ahead of you know the overall engine. Uh, you're doing business development and strategery, but at one point uh, you were actually a rocket engineer. You were working on, on this stuff. How is the performance of the rocket matching up to uh, what you had anticipated? I mean, are these test points meeting what your expectations are? So so that's actually the stage combustion test. One of the critical items is, is the injector performance. Um, and that directly connects to what we call the specific impulse of the engine, which is a, a critical parameter for, for the engine and the vehicle, the launch vehicle. Um, the data we're getting so far is extremely positive. We're, we're right where we want to be. Um, so from, from that risk perspective, we're, we're, we're burning down that risk. Uh, we're, we're matching our predictions. So we're very happy. Uh, we've got multiple injector configurations. Kind of our, our backup design is what we tested first, and it's great. So our primary, we expect to even be even better. So that's a very positive for the program. Um, it, you know, folks have a tendency of thinking injector like a car injector, but this is a vaguely similar idea. But how many oxidizer and uh, propellant injectors do you have in that combustion chamber as everything's feeding in there for the ignition? That's an extremely good question and one I'm not going to be able to answer <laughs> due to um, proprietary and ITAR information. Um, you can get a sense, go on the internet and look up other more publicly available. Uh, you know, we, it, each injector is made up of what we call injector elements. Um, that kind of the finer the pattern, the more of those you have, the, the more efficient combustion you get, but it's a trade between that and cost because smaller and more tends to co cost more. So we're trading, we want to optimize the right number to get the performance we need as well as make sure that it's as affordable as possible. And the F1 had thousands, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's not just one, like two pipes pouring in there with a little spark Correct. plug in the middle of it. Correct, yes, that uh, would not burn very well. <laughs> it, would not, it would not burn very well. Um, and to give folks a recap on the AR-1, what kind of uh, thrust are you guys looking for out of the engine uh, and when do you expect the first full up flight? So it is a uh, stage combustion, oxidizer-rich um, kerosene engine, booster engine. It generates over 500,000 pounds of thrust um, at liftoff. Um, for the applications we're envisioning, 
it'll, it'll be used in a two engine configuration. So from a vehicle level, you're talking over a million pounds of thrust. Um, and because it's staged combustion, it's very high performance in terms of that specific impulse I talked about, basically the miles per gallon. And, and where we're at right now, like I said, we just went through the engine system critical design. That basically, we, we get a group of our experts as well as government customers, other stakeholders, and they go through the entire design and say, okay, are you guys ready to really move into fabrication, manufacturing, and then development uh, testing of the engine? So it's a, it's a major milestone where we start to shift from you know, years of design work being validated by a lot of testing, not just here at, at Stennis, but a lot of manufacturing demonstrations and things like that culminating at the, at the critical design review. And now we move into the phase where we, we've ordered long lead material and stuff like that, but we really get into the, ma the manufacturing of these development engines, which will, 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 the testing of those engines will get underway in 2018. And with the focus being, you know, and we've been staying on our schedule that we've laid out is having this engine qualified for flight, certified by the end of 2019, which is when uh, Congress has mandated we do that. Um, it, for, for those of you with particularly good ears, there is a low frequency rumble and that's coming from a Rolls-Royce Trent uh, passenger jet engine that's under development a, 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 a little piece away from us. Um, is it good, you know, as a guy who used to work on rocket engines and be at test stands and things like that, is it always fun getting back out to a test stand? A absolutely. You know, we can look at PowerPoint charts and, and all that, but once you get out and actually see the hardware, you kind of get a sense for the power. Uh, that these engines generate and you know you'll you'll see the RS68 test coming up you'll you'll get a very good sense of the power here and and Stennis is an amazing complex because you know there's the development testing here at, at E there's A complex where RS25 and AR1 full engine testing will be done there's the B complex where RS68A as well as NASA SLS the the core stage will be tested so i mean this this is the place for for rocketry and uh, what's really really cool about B is F1s yeah, I mean, this, this Stennis was put in place basically for the Apollo program, so we're leveraging a lot of that infrastructure that was put in place for Apollo. So the A, the A complex stands were put in place to do stage testing of the second stage of the Saturn V rocket. The B complex initially tested the first stage, uh, five F1 engines generating seven and a half million pounds of thrust. So um, it's it's an impressive facility. But uh, the AR1. Thrust uh, is, uh, yeah, you mentioned half a, five, half a million, and then 68 is about more than 700,000. Right. Correct. That, that's, that's not bad. You could do this interview for me. <laughs> Tom, thanks very much. No problem. Thank you, Vago.